The Lumber Liquidators Marathon Open is brought to you by Roto Grip, the fastest growing bowling ball brand in the world. Roto Grip is king of them all. By Brunswick, the Deadly Siege, a high performance bowling ball from Brunswick. Choose the siege and let the mayhem begin. By Atonic. Visit atonic.com slash bowl. And by the United States Bowling Congress, the all new bowl.com, your online source for all things bowling. Log on to bowl.com today. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, back here with you as we get set for match number three, where your two seed, PDW, Pete Weber, set to take on Brad Angelo. But first, we flash back to earlier in the season and a great tournament in New Orleans. The Chris Paul Celebrity Invitational featured the NBA star versus the likes of Ludacris, Lamar Woodley, Heinz Ward, and some of the PBA's best, including Jason Belmonte, who threw the winning strike which allowed a jubilant Chris Paul to finally take home the trophy from his own events. So Weber was part of that tournament as well in New Orleans, partnered with Ludacris, what a great team they made. All the sunglasses, perfect. We update the stepladder. Brad Angelo set to take on Pete Weber here in our semifinal. The winner to take on number one seed Mike Scroggins. Again, Mike Scroggins with a win today will earn Player of the Year honors for the first time in his career. And, and if Brad wants, wants to continue the theme of the, the trash talking, he's, he's got the right opponent. Angelo will start this one off as the lower seed. He'll be on the left lane. Another opening strike for Angelo. That's eight in a row going back to last game. Time now for the intros for your number two seed, Pete Weber. His 34 PBA Tour victories ties him for third on the all-time list. His eight major wins include four U.S. Open victories. From St. Louis, Missouri, please welcome Pete Weber. And Robin, in, in terms of ball reaction, Pete Weber can get really, really close to what Brad Angelo is doing because Pete can throw it slow and he can really create a lot of axis rotation. Look for Pete Weber's ball reaction to be very similar to what Brad Angelo is doing. See, I told you. You've been nothing but right all day, Randy. Am I ever wrong? No, sir. Nice shot there. Talking about the Player of the Year implications today for Mike Scroggins, Pete Weber, and Brad Angelo with a chance to be spoiler. Pete Weber has never won Player of the Year honors. Eight majors he's won, the last one coming in 07 when he won the U.S. Open. His 34 tour titles tied for third most with Mark Roth. Jacks for PDW. Well, Pete Weber just needs to get his legs underneath him and somehow shake the nerves and the cobwebs. And I'll tell you, this is a good way to do it. Have your ball come in just a little bit high when you're working on a strike and trip the four out. And you can see just by that reaction how pleased he was. Oh my. Angelo improving as this oil pattern goes through some slight adjustments. He had a 207 versus Malott, only five strikes there. Had 10 strikes in the last game en route to a 256. And he opens up with a pair of strikes here in our semi. Brad's real comfortable. He's watching the oil pattern change in front of him and he knows exactly what moves to make. See what he did in match number one, only throwing five of 11 strikes in match in that first match, but my, oh my, came back strong in the second match. Big 256 game in 10 of 12. Last match, some verbal shots between Angelo and Barnes seem to really focus Angelo. Mm. 
misses the seven. Well, it was like somebody turned on the light switch, though. I mean, completely changed his demeanor, and it went from, okay, you know, this is going to be a great day of Sunday bowling, to all of a sudden, that's it. It's game on now. As you can see there, Brad leaving the blower seven, and he's not liking that a whole lot. Hey, Brad, what did the verbal conversation you had with Chris Barnes last game do for your game? Uh, well, I think anytime somebody tries to play any mental games with me, definitely is motivating because you know, that O in the last letter of my name doesn't allow me to take anything, <laughs> being Italian. <laughs> he said it, not me. Here's Pete Weber, perfect through two, bottom of the third effort. It was a different PDW we saw yesterday than we've seen the past couple months. He had that confidence. He had that aura about him where he was saying, look, every ball change I made this week, I had confidence in. I knew it was going to work. And he had that attitude of, of, I think, what people are used to seeing from him. Well, he, he had some time off. So mentally, he was, he was fresh coming into this event. And, you know, I think it was great. And some of the things he was saying it, it, that... You know, it feels like it's the first time if I were to win again. And you know what? All of that stuff I'm putting behind me, and I'm just going to go out there and bowl. And interestingly enough, on the stick Weber roll pattern, the last game, he shot 300. Yeah. The ball just didn't make want to make the turn. <sighs> this one just pushes just a little bit past the head pin, leaving that weak 10. But Rob, you're right. He says, you know what? I feel good. I'm bowling well. My mental game is sharp. And this game does look really good right now. Yeah. And he misses the 10 pin. Wonderful jinx. That's unusual. Pete. <sighs> well, and this is the the mental lapse that you just can't have in, in some of the struggles that he's had on TV in the last three years. Just a whiff 10 pin, and you know where Brad Angelo is right now, you can't give him any openings. We'll see what that does mentally for Pete's game. He can use motivation in a lot of different ways, not all of them positive. Angelo in the fourth, a little heavy there. Well, that ball looked like it made two moves going down the lane because as soon as it saw friction, man, it checked early and then checked again once it got to the back part of the lane, went through the nose, only leaving the 3-6. The spare here will be tied up through four. Well, we are tied, but again, Weber coming off that open frame in the fourth as he continues to sit. What you see now, Rob, is a little bit of carry issue because of the angle that Brad has to play. The old pattern is broken down. The front Take part of the lane is starting to go, which forces him to the center part of the lane, and now he must create angle. Well, when you create angle, you still got to get the ball to flip up at the right time to get into the 1-3 solidly. That went late, leaving the week 10. Angelo had a 300 game this week on the Cheetah oil pattern, also a 299 on the Cheetah. Takes care of the 10, which Pete Weber could not do in the fourth. So Pete started off strike, 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 and then whiffed the 10 pin, dropping the ball in the gutter in the fourth. He's had some time to think about it, as you see what he did in qualification this week, having two 300 games, including the last game yesterday of qualifying, which jumped him up to the two seed spot. Mm -hmm. 
And I thought it was interesting when, when right. speaking with Pete at age 47, I asked him, you know, how do you like the tournament? And he says, the more games, the better. He's always felt that way. In fact, the more games Pete Weber can bowl, he always feels like the cream's going to rise to the top. And, and I agree with him. Takes care of the 10 there as he goes to the I left I of it. Make it. And I here is so long, I knew eventually I was gonna. <laughs> here is Pete on what a win today would mean to him.